Hey, have you ever said to yourself, I want to collect a 90s X-Force run in the most confusing way possible? Say no more, fam. Alright guys, we have every X-Force Omnibus release so far. And yes, even though it looks like it's a bunch of different titles, this is the most chronological way to collect a 90s X-Force run. And it's every X-Force Omnibus that has been released. So let's jump in and take a look at them. First up, we have X-Force Volume 1, which they started off pretty normal as far as how they collect these issues. X-Force Volume 1 does collect um, the conclusion of the New Mutants run, issues 98 through 100. It does collect a couple annuals, and then it collects X-Force 1 through 15. It collects Spider-Man 16, which ties in with X-Force number 4. And then it has Cable, Blood and Metal 1 and 2. Classic stuff, Rob Liefeld stuff, 90s, mutants, and all that goodness. So, let's take a look at the artwork. Alright, so the dust jacket of X-Force Volume 1 has the Rob Liefeld issue number 1 fold-out poster spread out here. Fabian Nicizia, Rob Liefeld, Todd McFarlane, Mike Mignola, John Romita Jr., Mark Pasea. So this starts off with the last three issues of New Mutants. New Mutants 98, which is the first appearance of Deadpool. 99 is when Sunspot leaves the New Mutants. And then 100 is the first appearance of the X-Force. Then you have the annuals from New Mutants, New Warriors, X-Men, X-Factor. I can't remember the story arc, but in the 90s, the annuals would contain a complete story throughout the annuals, kind of like Evolutionary War and a bunch of others. Then you have X-Force number one, X-Force two, which is the second appearance of Deadpool, X-Force three, and it also gives you the Spider-Man 16 to go with X-Force four for that little two-part tie-in story. So that kind of double dips with the uh, Todd McFarlane Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus. And then it continues up until X-Force 15, which is actually the first Greg Capullo Marvel cover, if I'm not mistaken. And then you get the Cable uh, miniseries Blood and Metal 1 through 2. See, some say $100 cover price. This one is $99.99. New Mutants 87 Cable picture on the back. Or on the spine, I should say. All black hardcover on the back. Front is kind of similar. This was one of the uh, first omnibus that I purchased as well and read front to back. This had to be like 2014, 15 or something. I thought it was cool to get Deadpool's first appearance. Deadpool was huge at the time with the movie stuff was new. I was hunting these books down and flipping them on Instagram. <laughs> kind of how I started selling comics man i would go and buy like i would find a shop it would have like six issues of x force 2 which is the second appearance of deadpool and they would be like two bucks each now here it is right here and liefeld tweeted that this would be an important book it never was but i was still flipping it for like 20 bucks a pop on ig or making sets with like all the early deadpool x force issues and they would sell really good man the deadpool hype was all the way up That boy, Strife. Alright guys, so like I said, this ends at X-Force 15, right? So, Deadpool and the X-Force is really X-Force Volume 2, if you want to talk Omnibus. So, as the first volume ends on issue 15, this run collects issues X-Force 19 through 31, so it does skip 16 through 18 with Annual 2. This time it has Cable 1 through 8, and then it has the first two Deadpool miniseries, which were both four-part miniseries, Deadpool The Circle Chase and Deadpool Self-Titled. This also collects New Warriors 31 and Nomad 20. This has a lot of great artwork too, Greg Capullo, Tony Daniel, and more. Let's take a look at the artwork that continues that 90s X-Force run, along with uh, Cable's ongoing. Alright, so Deadpool and the X-Force, here's the front of the Omnibus. 
Not really the best dust jacket cover. Here goes the spine. And here is the back. So like I said, you know, it's continuing that 90s X-Force run, but this one also does have some cable issues. It also has the first Deadpool miniseries, continues X-Force, continues cable, jumps into the second Deadpool uh, miniseries. $100 cover price on this. You got the two graphics from the dust jacket split up on the back. Same spine. So you're just basically getting a continuation of X-Force with just some Cable and Deadpool solo issues involved with it. But like I said, basically it's X-Force Volume 2. Omnibus. Cable issue two. Everybody always had this cable issue one. Is this it right here? <laughs> they had the foil cover, straight 90s stuff. Everybody felt like the foil covers were going to be worth a lot of money. Probably because th those were the valuable trading cards at the time. If they were like holograms or whatever. So the annual. They love to do this in these 90s books, man. Flip it sideways and do it vertical for whatever reason. I, I used to love Shadowstar. I'm surprised he never became a more of a popular character. I guess in the 90s it was all about ninjas and swords and stuff. Yo, early Deadpool is my favorite Deadpool, man. Easily. I... I'm not really a fan of the Joe Kelly Deadpool. Like, this is my Deadpool right here. Deadpool and the X-Force ends on issues 31 of X-Force and issues 8 of Cable. Cable and the X-Force, which is the most recent omnibus to come out, continues where this book leaves off on X-Force and collects X-Force 32 through 43. It also has annual 3. And then Cable 9 through 20. So this book is a direct follow-up to this book, which is good to know. In addition to that, it does collect three issues that tie in the Phallix Covenant storyline, which is X Factor, I'm sorry, New Warriors 45 through 46, X Factor 106, Excalibur 82, and Wolverine 85. So, four issues. All right, let's take a look at this. We have the dust jacket here, Cyclops Wolverine Cable, White Spine. You have the issues on the back, $100 cover price. I got it for 50 bucks off InStockTrades.com. A little something about the creators. Dope hardcover, you also get, uh, I guess, Cable again, <laughs> Jean Grey. So 90s X-Force art and writing. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of pouches, a lot of big guns. But this is like my era of comics that I grew up with, man. Mutants were, powers were at an all-time high. Got some Omega Red action going on. Just flipping through the artwork for y'all.
Okay, so this ends on issue 43 of X-Force. And then you have this book, X-Static. So what is X-Static's? I'm not really an X-Static's fan. But towards the end of the 90s X-Force run, you have a whole completely new team. This collects issues of X-Force 116 through 129 from this run. So a huge gap of issues that we do not have collected in Omnibus yet. Then we get Brotherhood number 9, and that same team from the end of the X-Force run becomes X-Static, and we get the first 26 issues. This also collects Wolverine and Dupe 1 through 2. X-Static presents Dead Girl 1 through 5, and material from X-Men Unlimited 41, I Heart Marvel, My Mutant Heart, and Nation X-4. This run uh, has a cult following, maybe because of all the dupe stuff. Milligan, Allred, Dragata, and Cook. Let's take a look at it. All right, so checking out Ecstatic. I remember this book was uh, readily available, like $30 at the local shop. Like, nobody wanted it. And then it went out of print, and it started selling for over cover price. I've said it before, and I've said it again. Not a fan of Allred's art. I do appreciate giving us dupe, but that being said, I have not read Ecstatics, so I can't really judge based on the story. But people really uh, like this uh, Ecstatics run. So you get a wraparound cover with the uh, dust jacket here. The cover price on this was $125. It's an old school Marvel omnibus, so it's got like the leathery type of hardcover. The red and yellow. So like I mentioned, it starts off in X-Force, and it's already the new squad. It's not the X-Force from the 90s. But uh, it plays out that for a couple issues, and then they get their own title called Ecstatics. Which, honestly, I'm not really too familiar with. I only really know about Dupe, and I know about him more from the uh, Jason Aaron, Wolverine, and the X-Men run. This is an old book, and like the binding is jacked up for me too. Check this out. Kind of like very stiff, and somebody didn't stretch that spine, y'all. Looks a lot like his eye zombie stuff. Yeah, look at this. That's not how that should be bending. Last up, we have the Uncanny X-Force. This is not a continuation of the 90s X-Force run. After Ecstatics, Kyle and Yost bring us uh, this kind of X-Force book. They do that, and it's right around the time of the Messiah Complex. I know they have like a miniseries Sex and Violence. I had all the oversized hardcovers. They definitely need an omnibus for that run. But what Rick Remender did was took that team and labeled them Uncanny X-Force and put together one of the best X-Men stories of all time, in my opinion. One of, one of my favorite Marvel Omnis of all time. Just uh, a cool, kick-ass team. Awesome characters, awesome powers, great covers, uh, an interesting story, overarching story and subplots. And just all around, like, one of my biggest recommendations if you want to read, like, a Marvel title, an X-Men title, a Mutant title, whatever. Um, because this is really, like, just the Black Ops X-Men. This is not, like, this is not off-brand mutants. This is Wolverine, Psylocke, Archangel, <laughs> Nightcrawler, Deadpool, you know, uh, De uh, Deathlock, Phantom X. So it's not, it's not like where X-Force, the first volume, was like an offshoot of new mutants. This is more like an offshoot of X-Men. Let's take a look at it. All right, creme de la creme right here. Uncanny X-Force by Rick Remender. You got a couple of different artists who contributed to the run. One of my favorite Omnibus and one of my favorite Marvel runs. F dope team. Wolverine, Psylocke, Archangel, Phantom X, Deadpool. We get Deathlock. We get Nightcrawler. It's just a, an awesome team. 
cover artwork was amazing. The Archangel Silox arc was crazy. The uh, the Evan Kid of Apocalypse stuff was cool. Like, should you kill a child that you know will grow up to become Apocalypse? A whale of an omnibus, very sought after, sold out long time ago. All white Omni for the hardcover. I, I want to reread this. I've read this run twice so far when I had it in single issues. So this is a little prequel because it starts off with Deadpool jumping down this thing. There we go. The Apocalypse Solution. You have this Deadpool. They all have the same kind of color costume, which is extended from the Kyle Yost um, X-Force run. Liefeld variant. Wolverine's leading this team. I feel like it's without Cyclops' uh, involvement, because I don't think Cyclops is around at all here. Just an excellent run, a must read. They do collect this run in two trade paperbacks, so if you want to just read it without spending you know, an arm and a leg, go for uh, the trades. I've said this before, but like when I see those trades in the local shops, I'm tempted to still pick them up. I don't know, I just, I love this run, man. This also like leads into Jason Aaron's Wolverine and the X-Men run as well. All right, guys, so that was pretty quick, but you know, we only had five omnibus that collect every X-Force omnibus that have been released so far. Some of it collects that first 90s run along with the first cable run in chronolog uh, chronological order. However, there are some gaps uh, a little bit in the beginning and a big chunk between Cable and the X-Force and Ecstatics. Let me know what you think about every X-Force omnibus in the comments below. Drop that like on the way out, support your boy, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Hit the bell. We drop something every day. Usually is mint in the morning for y'all. I drop it usually like 8 a.m. Eastern. And uh, you guys stay minty fresh. Peace.